So a viewer writes in, hey David, how do I stop being offended so easily? Oh man, what a relevant question to all of us, right? Well, in this video, I have seven tips and three tools to help you overcome offense. That's coming up today on My Virtual Mentor. Well, hey, my friend, it's David, founder of My Virtual Mentor. I lead men to go further, faster in their faith in Jesus Christ. And if you're new to the channel, man, welcome. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for finding us. Listen, every week we just take on a question submitted by viewers just like you on practical nuts and bolts, life skills of the Christian faith. Maybe you grew up without a biological father or a spiritual father or mentor in your life. And you just don't know these things automatically. Hey, listen, I get it. So instead of going to Google or, or YouTube video, we're gonna go to the Word of God and answer these questions, okay? So let's get right on into it today. Let me start with what I'm calling the offense spiral. Okay, it starts with, you know, just getting offended, and we all do, right? And then it can, unchecked, go into bitterness, right? And then unforgiveness. It'll graduate and escalate into unforgiveness. It'll sever your relationships, and if you're not careful, it'll end up in full-blown hatred of another individual. And, you know, we can learn from Jonah, you know, this downward spiral thing. You know, he went down to Joppa, down to the bottom of the boat, and then finally down in the belly of a large fish, okay? And we don't want to go down, down, down. We want to be up and coming, okay? So let me give you real quick seven tips to overcome offense. We'll go through these pretty rapidly, okay? And I want to just keep things super simple. Just We can just have some ABCs on each of these so this doesn't get long. This isn't a comprehensive, exhaustive teaching. It's just some things to get you started thinking and some tips and tools, okay? So here we go. Here's the first one, and that is offenses are inevitable. I mean, there's no way around that, right? In fact, Jesus said it is impossible that offenses will not come Luke 17 verse 1. So there you go from the lips of the master himself. We're going to collide with offense. No way around it. So we got to work through it. And you know, uh, I, I remember one time I uh, was on staff at a church and I came into the church office and the secretary was just holding her hands in her, uh, her face in her hands and just crying. I said, hey, what's wrong? And she said, well, as you know, I'm getting ready to get married, but I'm afraid that I'm going to offend and hurt my husband. And she said, I don't want to do that, and I'm scared. I don't know what to do. Okay. And so I sat down, and we talked, and I said, look, listen, um, you absolutely are going to offend and hurt your, your future husband when you get married here soon, and that's inescapable. But the great disclaimer, I explained it to her, was you can sit down and tell him, look, when this happens, uh, not if, but when this happens, I want to come clean about it. I want to ask for forgiveness. I want to uh, own it and make it right as soon as reasonably possible, okay? And I said, you know, that's what I call the great disclaimer, okay? You just set the expectation up front. Here is how I'm going to handle it when offenses come, okay? So let's go through some ABCs real quick. First of all, ready or not, here they come. Okay, we get that. We get that. Letter B is forewarned is forearmed. What I'm saying there is, listen, have a policy, a protocol, a procedure of how you're going to respond when offenses come to you. Because we know they're coming, so come on, let's brace for impact and let's have a personal protocol of how we handle such things. You know, for example, you know, what's driving you? You know, I've got a picture of a train that's going to loop this clip here. And so imagine, you know, you got three engines in the front and a hundred cars, and then you have the caboose or that little gizmo thing for the GPS on it, right? Um, so the, I'm, I'm saying that you need to name the first car engine in your train truth, okay? And then the second car, you need to have faith. Faith in what? Following the truth. And then the third car is obedience. So you obey 
through faith, the truth. And that is a powerful engine to drive your life. And your emotions are all the way back at the end of the caboose or that little device they put on the end of a train. That's where your feelings need to go because your feelings are powerless to propel you down the track of life, okay? I hope that analogy makes sense to you, okay? And so I'm just saying that uh, emotions are not the best or most reliable way to respond to an offense. Do you agree with that? Okay, and here's letter C on this first point. Stop, drop, and roll, okay? All I'm saying, I know this is when, when you're in a fire, stop, drop, and roll, but I'm saying when you're, you know, you're getting ready to get fired up, okay? Because somebody you know, just ticked you off, we need to stop with the knee-jerk words. We need to you know, drop the attitude, and we need to let this thing just roll off us, like water off a duck's back, okay? All right, stop, drop, and roll. You know, the Bible even talks about it, it is to a man's honor to overlook an offense. You see it right there, 19 verse 11, okay? All right, here's the second tip, and that is being offended is a choice. Make no mistake, it is a choice, okay? Look at this, um, the Bible says Psalm 119 verses 105, I'm gonna give it to you in true translations. First, here's the King James. Great peace have they that love your law, and nothing shall offend them. One of the antidotes to walking in a spirit of offense is to be filled with the word of God, okay? And then here's it, it is in the New King James Version. You know, great peace have they that love that law and nothing shall make them stumble. Listen, offense can be a stumbling block to us. We can get tripped up uh, as we're walking our walk with the Lord. And man, this is this will trip us up and we can get skinned up and hurt on this, okay? So we need to make it a stepping stone, not a stumbling block, okay? Oh, so three ABCs on this. First of all, uh, choose uh, your words wisely because you never know when you're gonna have to eat your words to make them sweet, right? Just like toothpaste out of the tube, you cannot get them back. Choose wisely. Letter, letter B is choose, uh, choose your battles. I mean, ask yourself, I mean, just pause, for 10 seconds when you're offended and say, is this really uh, a hill worth dying for? Is this really worth, you know, severing a, a relationship over? And I will tell you that some battles are, they're worth that, okay? When it comes to our family, our faith, things like that. But you know, most things are not worth, uh, you know, going to war, uh, nuclear war over, okay? Uh, uh, metaphorically speaking. And then let her see, it's just choose grace. Come on, man, choose grace, choose mercy, choose being kind. You know, be, be the person of integrity. Take the initiative to just overlook the thing. Choose grace. Okay, uh, third tip is offenses are usually unintentional. I mean, they usually are, okay? Now, offenses come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. There's, there's some that are legitimate and some that are illegitimate. Some are major and some... Frankly, they're minor, and some are intentional and some uh, are unintentional. I would argue that most are unintentional. Here's some ABCs. First of all, we never have all the facts. You don't, I don't, we do not have all the facts in a situation, okay? Secondly is, you know, our assumptions can get us into trouble. <laughs> I mean, assumptions are not helpful at all, okay? You know, we let our minds race and our vain imaginations, and then the enemy throws us into spiritual warfare. Pretty soon, we're just mad as heck at somebody. Uh, and we don't, we're assuming uh, their motives and the intent of their heart, and that's dangerous. And then number three is people are usually thinking of themselves, not you. You walk into a room and you say, I wonder what they're thinking of me. Well, guess what? They're not. Okay, people are frankly not thinking about us nearly all the time. Okay, you know, don't be presumptuous and think that they are because usually they're not. Okay, all right, here's the fourth tip, and that is manage the three C's. I'm calling this the three C's. So here we go. The first C is communicate. Oh, come on, we have to have a skill set of being able to articulate and communicate our feelings, ask good questions, things like that. Okay, we need to be effective communicators in order to disarm. Uh, you know, the spirit of offense. I love what John Maxwell said is communication is good, but connection is better. Come on, get into their world when somebody, you know, uh, rips off a comment to you and just say, hey, 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 what's going on? I mean, how are you doing really? I mean, obviously you're upset uh, because people often say things out of character and you need to communicate with them. Okay, letter B is conflict. We need to resolve conflict biblically, okay? Let's go right to the scriptures. Matthew 18 gives us four steps in which to do that. 
If, you know, if you're having trouble or offended with someone, it says go to them privately, okay? You know, don't pick up the phone, don't send a text, don't send an email to somebody else and say, hey, you'll never guess what, you know, Sister Broomhilda did to me. Now, just, just go to this person privately. I remember one time one guy said, uh, uh, his name is Richie, he said, uh, you know, if we've got time to talk about someone, we've got time to pray for them, go ahead, you start, and he bowed his head. Man, he, he busted me because I was, I was telling something about someone I shouldn't have been done. And he said, well, if we've got time to talk about him, we've got time to pray for him. Go ahead. You start him about his head. Man, come on. That's, that's powerful. Don't miss that. And um, so here's four steps, according to Matthew chapter 18, to resolve conflict. Well, the first one we've already talked about, and that is go to them privately. Secondly, if that doesn't work, take you know, two or three people with you as witnesses. Try to work it out. You know, a small group leader, you know, a friend somebody like that. Number three, that doesn't work out, you know, take it to the church. I'm seeing that and interpreting that as saying, you know, get a pastor involved, a spiritual leader involved, not get up there and make a microphone pastor. I need to make an announcement to the church. You know, Johnny over here has been a, uh, been a, you know, a terrible person that said dumb things. You don't want to do that. And then the last step is really, you know, if somebody doesn't work through this process, they're really not walking in, in the faith, okay? They're, they're acting like an unbeliever, and you need to treat them as such according to Matthew 18, okay? So here's letter C, and that is clarification. Listen, I'm telling you, this is good, rock-solid stuff, when I, what I'm going to say here. Two questions is seek understanding. Look at this. Look at, when someone offends you, talk to them and say, hey, you know, help me understand what you meant when you said... Or help me understand what you meant when you did this. You said this or you did this, okay? That question is so disarming. It's not offensive at all. You're just asking to understand where they're coming from about what they said or what they did, okay? Here's number five, and that is don't take the bait. Don't take the bait, okay? Listen, listen, it's a trap. My brother, my friend, offense is a trap, okay? It's like trapping monkeys. You know, the way that they, uh, I'm, I've heard it said, they trap monkeys is they take a container, a jar, or a basket or something, they put a banana or a piece of fruit in it, the monkey puts his hand in there, and it only has an opening enough, wide enough for the wrist, and then he grabs a hold of that banana, but he can't get it out, you see, and he will not let it go. All he has to do to get away is let the fruit or the banana go, and he pulls his hand right out, but he will not do it, and that's how they trap monkeys in the areas where monkeys live in, in the world. And he won't let it go, but we need to let it go because we don't want to be trapped, okay? It's a trap. You know, it is a set up. I'll tell you, you know, uh, the enemy, he hates you. He wants to get you in trouble with your mouth, my mouth, and it's a set up. And then lastly, it's an opportunity though. It's an opportunity for you to step up uh, and do the right thing, to have character, have integrity, you know, be the better man. Okay. All right. Here's number six. As we, two more to go, where we're going to wind it down. So that is let it go. And don't worry. Don't worry. I am not going to sing, you know, let it go uh, from Frozen. Won't do it. Not going to happen. Okay. Here's three, some ABCs. First of all, you know, set them free by letting them go. Let them off the hook. Just, just let it roll off you. And then what you'll do, let it be, is set yourself free when you do that. You won't be carrying around all this list of all the wrong things that people have said and done to you, okay? And the Bible says um, in Matthew 6, 15, it says, uh, all right, but if you don't, well, look, if you don't forgive them, God's not going to forgive you, okay? I'm paraphrasing that a little bit, but, you know, our forgiveness is tied to uh you know, our willingness to forgive others. And then let us see, you know, allow God to bless you and really to work on them. I mean, uh, we can't correct or chastise or discipline anybody. That's between them and God. But you know what? God will bless you as we do the right thing, okay? And here's the final thing, and that is uh, number seven, you know, offenses can be good for you. Oh, uh, there are benefits to this. There's some advantages. Here's three. First of all, it's helpful in building our character. It surely is. Uh, letter B is it it produces fruit. One of the fruits of the Spirit is patience. We hate that, but it is what it is, and you're going to get that when people rub you the wrong way. And, you know, John uh, 15, verse 8, you know, Jesus is saying, look, my Father's glorified when you bear much fruit. We want to bear much fruit and glorify God, right? And let, her, let her see, lastly, is it, um, it honors God. And don't we want to do that? 
I mean, that's why you're watching this video. If you're, if you're still watching me right now, there's something inside you that is motivated and inspired intrinsically to want to honor God. Okay, so seven tips to of overcome offense. Let's review these real quick, and then I'll uh, wind down this video. Number, seven, uh, number one, offenses are inevitable. Okay, tip number two, uh, being offended is a choice. Number three, offenses are, are usually unintentional. Tip number four, manage the three C's. We talked about that. Uh, number five is don't take the bait. Uh, I got a resource for you about that here in a moment. Number five, six, just let it go. Don't be trapped like a monkey. And then number seven, offenses can be good for us in building us up as men of God. So, okay, here's the big idea as we close, and that is let's not offend God by refusing to forgive those who offend us. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so I got three two go deeper tools for you optionally. I'll put those in the, in the description links below. And here is the first one. Um, it's, I just looked up 10 verses on offending people. You can do that in just you know a few minutes. The second one is um, my pastor, uh, Ron Kirdoff, uh preached a sermon called uh, Overcoming Offense. It's fantastic. And then number three, and I've got some double <laughs> letter uh, numbers there. Forgive me for that. Uh, but that is The Bait of Satan by John Bevere. This is the classic quintessential book on, on overcoming offense. And I'll put the link in the description below. Okay, so I hope that you... how found that helpful. Hey, David, how do I stop being offended so easily? Okay. So listen, I've got a question for you. Are you up for a challenge? I want to invite you into a 21 day challenge with me. What is a 21 day challenge? Well, listen, it is a power tool to jumpstart positive change in a man's life. And I want to offer it to you for free, 100% virtual, 100% free. I'll put the link in the description below. It's called Launch with David. I'm doing this the first of next month. Check it out and uh, join me in doing a 21 day challenge to help you to go further faster in your faith in Jesus Christ, okay? All right, so that's it for today. If you have any questions uh, that you want me to do a video on, put them in the description below. I love to, uh, to take that on. I read every comment. And so for now, I'm David, your virtual mentor. I wanna remind you that I'm always for you and I'm never against you. I'll see you in the next video.